Ladies and gentlemen, please put a warm welcome to our guest, Professor Morris Hadebe. In Jaye game, for real. Now, listen to this. He's got a very long CV. I will not read it all, okay? Because we want to listen to him and to get his wisdom, right? So, just listen just to this bit. Morris Hatebe is currently the head and director of VEDS Business School. Previously, he served as executive vice president responsible for Sasol's energy business globally. He was accountable for the successful marketing of all energy business products, as well as managing the gas to liquids GTL joint ventures in Qatar, Oryx GTL, and Nigeria EGTL, and the gas to power GTP venture in Mozambique. Maurice Khatebe is the founder and chairman of Unleashing Leadership Potential Foundation in South Africa. He is an experienced energy industry executive, having worked in the sector for over 30 years. During his eight years at Shell, seven years at Axel, and 16 years at Sasol, he has had profit and loss experience and responsibility, developed a deep understanding of the energy sector, both upstream and downstream and has been involved in significant projects. Morris has extensive operational experience throughout his career, including managing the impacts of sharp drops in oil price through restructuring, cost cutting, and cash management. When he became Sasol Oil Managing Director, he launched the Go For Great project to create quantum leap in revenues and profitability and drove the Functional Excellence Program and the Phoenix Program in Sasol Oil. He also steered the response plan in 2009 at Sasol Oil to the sharp fall in oil price in order to dramatically reduce the cost base. He obtained a Bachelor of Science degree, BSc Applied Mathematics and Physics from the University of the North, now known as University of Limpopo, Polokwane, in 1983, and a higher diploma of educators for adults from the University of Witwatersrand, Johannesburg. And in 1991, he attended the Management Advanced Program at Vets Business School, which he now heads. And he obtained, he obtained a Master's in Business Administration, MBA, from the same business school. Now, there is so much more to tell you about Morris, but I want us to listen to him, right? This is his CV. You can Google him. He's got so much more that he's done. And we are incredibly proud of him. So today, we are here to discuss the importance of skills, attitude, and education in business. Do you follow? Here's the first question. Other than knowledge, does an appropriate education offer you increased confidence? Yeah. If so, how important is this in terms of success? Well, first let me uh, thank Milton. He's a seasoned uh, moderator. Can you hear me? Uh, thank you for the opportunity. And I can also uh, thank uh, Simpio Masiza for this wonderful work. I'm uh, in awe of the work that is here, that is going on right now. And I think, uh, and all the organizers, and Palisa and everyone. So let's give them a round of applause. I want to give them a round of applause and acknowledge everyone who has played a huge role. So I, I, it's, it's, it's important. Your question is, is education important in, in, uh, in entrepreneurship? 
Definitely, definitely. There's no doubt in my mind about that. But is it, is it, is it essential that you can't start a business without education? The answer is no. You can start a business and be an entrepreneur with a, a, a very little education. But what education does is that it gives you a very great understanding of how the economy works and it gives you a great understanding of how the whole ecosystem of entrepreneurship works and then it helps you to select in a strategic way the area where you want to focus and then we have a competitive advantage in which you operate. And I have been an entrepreneur before, I went to business school uh, and I played in, as a, in a small uh, entrepreneur uh, space, uh, but when I went to business school, uh, I was able to understand big business, medium-sized business, and in that way, it helped me to really be able to enter medium-sized businesses and then finally run global businesses. So education does play an important role uh, to take you to the highest level of your uh, entrepreneurial skills, talent, and, and the heights you can go to. And how, how important is it uh, in terms of success? It is imp very important in terms of success because when you're an entrepreneur, what, is, what are you doing actually uh, when you're an entrepreneur? I run businesses, uh, I run a business school right now. You, you, you solve problems all the time. Actually, when you wake up in the morning, you're faced with a myriad of problems. And you need to be able to have critical thinking and education is an ability to train your mind. You know, the brain is like a muscle. You know, that's why we take a, a, a muscle, a, a build, build, and you make your muscles strong. So it enables you to have a critical mind to be able to solve problems. You wake up in the morning, uh, you have a cash flow problem. You have got to understand your debit, your credit. You've got to understand how actually you're going to manage your cash. If you do not have education that understand a little bit of accounting, you can get yourself into serious trouble. The certain decisions that you make every day, uh, and, and, and if you're not careful, you're gonna make major mistakes. I remember, for instance, uh, uh, when I was running a small business uh, many, many years ago uh, at Wondrous there, I actually owned a, a, a shop there, uh, uh, which is as a convenience store. Uh, I, at that time, I really hadn't understand the value of thinking about how you use working capital. Because I just thought when you've got money in your bank account, all that money you can use it the way you want to use it. And uh, uh, the business was starting to do well, and then all of a sudden I thought, let me grow this business very quickly. And then next door to it, uh, uh, the guy uh, left, and then I decided to open a dry clean next to it. So I took all the money that was in the bank that was supposed to be able to service and run this business, and I started fixing the, the, the shop next to me, putting shelves, and then started to, to open a dry clean. And before I know, at the end of the month, I didn't have cash to be able to pay salaries and to pay uh, uh, creditors and to pay all my suppliers. But I was very keen of, because I was thinking, I'm growing, I'm growing. And before I knew, I was actually going to a bankrupt situation. And literally, in fact, I did go bankrupt because I ran out of cash. And let me tell you, that's why education is so important. It teaches you that cash is king, profit is an opinion, and revenue is, or turnover, is vanity. So you just have to manage cash. Okay. Brilliant. I love that story. The second question I have for you is, how does education impact your attitude in business? And how does your attitude impact your success? Fant fantastic question. Education helps you, your attitude to really able to work with other people. In other words, it makes you to understand different styles of people, especially if you uh, study your workforce, people that work for you. It helps you to understand their psychosocial men mindset. It helps you to understand how to lead them. And especially if you focus in, 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 as an entrepreneur, uh, it, you must know that you're a leader. In fact, I wanted to speak more about leadership 
because that's what I, I'm passionate about. You're leading people all the time. And when you're not investing in your own education about understanding leadership, you're not going to grow. And then it helps with your attitude also because it gives you a positive attitude. It gives you confidence. When I finished my MBA, I didn't have the confidence and an attitude to be able to tackle an, a, a, a big business like being part of the team that started an oil company because I always thought, you know what, maybe I can run a garage and that's, that's all that uh, I, I can do. But after finishing an MBA program, I said, no, I don't have to run a garage. I can actually be part of the team that starts an oil company. And that's why we started Excel Petroleum. Some of you saw those garages, which was later bought by Sasol. And then when you see all the con uh, Sasol service stations that you have now, I was able to run them. So it changed my attitude to think big and think global and also have an attitude of confidence. And because what is, what is the, 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 the expression? Your attitude determines your altitude. Get that one. I'm repeating it. Your attitude determines your, alti your altitude. If your attitude is that you want to play in a Chappies League as a small business, fine. You can make a lot of money there. Or you can go to a Mutsipi League, fine. You can go and make it. But if you want to play in a big space, which is what I'm here for, because I've traveled that journey from being a small business person to be a business leader of, at, at the global level. I want you to have that kind of an attitude. I want you to have an attitude which says, the sky is not the limit. The sky is a stepping stone for you. That's a fundamental difference in attitude. Have you got that? That's what education can do and enable you to think big and think global while you're running a local business. Oh. Beautiful. So, are you listening? You must dream big. Don't dream about opening a container, a spaza shop, an orange farm. Yeah. Dream big. Dream about the guy who makes the containers for everybody. Okay? Beyond orange farm. That is the message we are hearing from Professor Maurice Khadebe. We are now joined and we welcome Sidiso Moshomi, who's the Senior Director for the Institute for the Future of Work. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Sidiso Moshomi. Welcome, Dr. Moshomi. Thank you, sir. Thank you. It's good to have you here with us. We are relieved that you made it here safe and sound. Yeah. Now, let me tell you briefly about Ntate Mushomi. He has more than 20 years of experience in international relations, trade and investment, resource mobilization and project management. His experiences span the NGO sector, corporate and public sectors. He, he has joined the university from the public sector where he worked as director responsible for strategic partnerships, special projects, and international relations at the Gauteng Department of Economic Development. In his role, he was responsible to source and forge strategic partnerships between government and the corporate sector, as well as lobby for integration of SMMEs into mainstream economy through market access initiatives. He also liaises with embassies, multilateral and bilateral development agencies to facilitate collaborations and leverage foreign direct investment. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Mushom. He holds a B honors in international politics, University of South Africa, and majored in South Africa international political economy, foreign policy analysis, politics in the 21st century, and approaches to research, conflict, peace, and security studies as part of his portfolio. Mushomi wrote a paper on Chinese domestic economic policies within the global perspective. 
There is so much more on him which you can Google. For now, we want to hear from him. Mr. Mutlomi, I ask Professor Khatebe the question which I hope you can answer for us as well. How important is knowledge and education to increase one's confidence for their success? Um, thank you so much. Uh, it, it's an honor for me uh, today to be back in Orange Farm. Um, in my previous life in government, um, my team and I were basically liaising with uh, the uh, SMMEs that would then have been affected by uh, the unrest in July. And so I'm feeling at home. And, and then the question that you have asked, Chair, is quite critical, especially in the epoch of social media or the epoch of bling. Uh, I think it was last week or a week before where there was a gentleman sitting in the car, uh, you know, driving those uh, F car, and uh, he, he was uh, dissing education. He was actually asking, uh, if I can have this without metric, uh, why should you be going to school? Then, then the question would then be, uh, is there a disjuncture uh, between education and SMMEs, uh, which is basically uh, the point that needs to be addressed. I think the past few years, uh, we, we have heard the word fourth industrial revolution, and uh, we have heard more about the innovative economy. And uh, the question would then be, uh, without education, are we able or will we be able as South Africa to, to match the speed at which the global economy is going. That is one. Now, from the perspective of where I am sitting from uh, TUT Institute for Future of Technology, we, we realize that um, there has been a huge chasm uh, between society and uh, academia, and between academia and the industry. And academia is the source of knowledge. And education is an activity whereby one is searching for knowledge. Now, what we are then trying to do is that we need to close the gap uh, that is there between the community and the, uh, and the academia and between academia and the industry. And the reason uh, we are saying that is uh, we, we find that um, there are initiatives within the, in, uh, the entrepreneur sphere uh, that are basically not relevant to what the market wants. And without proper education, without information, uh, any SMME that would then try to venture into the market is bound to fail. So education is what propels you uh, to succeed in your entrepreneurial um, uh, ad adventures. Thank you very much. Which, which brings me, um, I know Professor Khatebe a little bit more than just a panelist. Yeah. Um, it brings me to a question which I know is your passion. You, as head and director of Vets Business School, you're trying to transform the institution in such a way that people don't just come to get academic qualifications in so much as trying to get what the industry is looking for yeah. and what they qualify for, to try and marry those two. Yeah. Very, very important uh, transformation that we're busy at uh, uh, Vets Business School is two uh, processes of transformation that we're busy with. First is to use this overused cliche called pivot, so we, we, we're moving it uh, from being a BlackBerry uh, to be in the digital world. How many of you own BlackBerry? You know the world moves so fast. Now it's gone because it didn't change. How many of you? Uh, I'm old enough that I used to have LPs. Uh, where are they today? How many of you are uh, old enough that I used to have cassettes? Where are they today? Uh, no, this far. Well, there's Telegram. Uh, uh, well, how many of you can uh, even uh, write an English letter now? Because you don't need to because it's email. So we're moving the 
the, the school, both its infrastructure and the, and the programs it is teaching into digital at the core, and at the same time technologically extremely savvy, and then finally also make sure that innovation is at the key. And I think the same with TUT, I would say that's where we're going. So it's very important. But at the same time, we are reestablishing our center for entrepreneurship because we realize that you can teach people to be smart, but also you need to teach them to be streetwise in how to make business work. So we're establishing a center for entrepreneurship where it does not need you to have passed uh, your, your, your metric. Uh, it doesn't need you to have a degree. You can come there and then we will deal with the real practical issues of how you run your business, first as a small entrepreneur, how you, you manage your inventory, how you manage your supply chain, how you make sure that you've got uh, uh, governance issues that are relating to your business uh, registration with all the structures that, re that, that, that govern your industry, understanding your industry, and how to make money. At the end of the day, is for you to be able to make money and make profit so that you can be able to grow your business and be able to employ more people. In fact, in South Africa today, we need you to create jobs. Don't expect the big companies to create jobs. It's you who are going to create jobs. And you as entrepreneurs, and, and uh, I, 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 I love entrepreneurs because my grandfather, by the way, he was done at five, but he started a little shop in Katleo, which he grew up into a supermarket. Can you imagine if he had a degree, he probably would have built the pick and pay. It grew the same time at the same time with Raymond Ackerman. And, and, and the difference is that uh, uh, the education, obviously the apartheid system was restricting them. But it's so important to continuously what we call lifelong learning. That's what we're doing at business school. So that you continue to learn, to learn, because the world is changing so fast. Two weeks ago I was in Lisbon. We had a meeting of all the uh, leaders of business school. We just were checking how the world is moving so fast. The libraries are going to be gone tomorrow morning because there will be virtual libraries. These kinds of meetings, we can have them globally uh, with all the linking that are there. So it's so important. It's what we're doing at business school. And uh, it's going to be um, an exciting journey for me, especially after spending three decades in, in the corporate world in business. Now I'm in academia. I'm closing that gap. I'm standing in the middle, and I'm bringing so many business people. The guy, for instance, who started Nando's has come into our advisory board. Uh, Bumi, who's running Bidvest, is on our advisory board. Uh, great leadership of this country uh, and business leaders are in our board. And because we want to make sure that uh, uh, we do both produce academically sound, innovative, in, uh, and digitally sound people, but at the same time, entrepreneurial. We're even creating a, 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 a tech startup uh, uh, initiative uh, called uh, Chimulong, where if you've got a technology that you want us to help you with, we help you to start and be able to also uh, help you uh, commercialize it and then help you with the funding. That's what we're busy with. Beautiful. Fresh, fresh from Lisbon. <laughs> Portugal, Baba. Ah, is it in Java, Baba? That's what you must aspire to be. We are here to build those dreams in your mind yeah. and dream big and even bigger than what we are saying, right? So just listen to this question now. Tatem uh, Shlomi, you are not new into academia. You uh, had spent some time as a visiting lecturer at Haggai Institute in Singapore, teaching strategic communication. Who's mm. Wanji? Yes. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Well done. This is inspirational. You can also do it. That's why we are here. We want you to dream about doing this, going to Singapore and being a visiting lecturer from Orange Farm. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to happen. And one of you in this room will be standing on the podium and you will talk about this day. I promise you, some of you are going to do it. I, I, I believe that. Now, Mr. Mkromi, with all that experience in Singapore, 
what happened there? What did you find about the Singaporeans that we can learn from? Because they don't have gold, they don't have platinum, they're just like somewhere near the ocean, and suddenly their economy is doing better than people who've, who are working on platinum. Um, <coughs> central to the development of Singapore, beside great leadership, uh, is uh, their investment in education. Uh, in Singapore, to finish university is basically every family would want their kid to finish their university. And uh, that is one. Two, uh, their investment in innovation uh, has actually propelled them, especially within the fintech space, uh, has propelled them actually to become one of the top countries. Yeah. Uh, I was saying to someone, their dollar reserves are even more than the American dollar reserves, uh, as small as they are. Then the question would then be, uh, the miracle of Singapore can it happen in South Africa? Um, there, there are some ingredients that we need to make that miracle happen. Uh, one, we, we need leadership that is very decisive. And uh, two, we need uh, institutions uh, that are willing to stand in the gap and assist the leadership that is decisive. And uh, that we see in uh, the posture that the likes of VETS, the like of TUT, it's taking. Uh, with the Institute for Future of Work, we, we, we are working with us to produce future-ready graduates. And what does future-ready graduate look like? Future-ready graduate is the graduate that is ready for the market. And that we then uh, define within two perspectives. One perspective, uh, it's a graduate that when they leave the door of the university, they are able to start a business that would become a multiply, multiplying effect in employment. And uh, now, how are we doing that? Um, through the, the, uh, the institution, we have an acceleration lab uh, that will be looking at reskilling the students. Most of you, when you went to university, you didn't know what you want to study. You registered and suddenly you are sitting with a degree that you can't use. And uh, at the Tech Hub in Headfield, we have a girl. Uh, she studied B-Tech uh, Engineering, and she realized she couldn't get a job. And uh, she's now a virtual reality specialist uh, because we managed to reskill that person. And she can go out, start her own company, or be employed in that industry. The second kind of graduate is the one that uh, when you walk out of university, uh, companies would actually be fighting to have you because you would have gone through a, a greater program. And that is the same with the universities in Singapore. Uh, most of the companies are fighting for the graduates. And uh, from the TUT perspective, we are saying we want to create such an ecosystem. And in creating that ecosystem is to give a black child an opportunity uh, to compete globally. I'm, I'm sad to say we are coming to the end of this session um, because we have to give way to other colleagues who are coming to share their great ideas with you. But, Professor Khatebe, I heard what you spoke about the academic world. I also want you to share a little bit. I know you told us about you opening the shop and then not managing the cash properly and so on. I want you to just share your story a little bit about values. What makes people to succeed? There is a value system that you have to follow. You can't just be floating all over the place. What shaped you, what kept you in line so that Anyone here who wants to emulate you perhaps can take a leaf from your own uh, personal development. Well, let me just start with uh, uh, the story of my grandfather because he played such, he was the biggest mentor of my life. As soon as I could count, seven years of age, uh, he wanted me at a shop. Uh, and and he would teach me uh, to go to stalk, 
when you go to Metro, and then we come back, we unpack, we put, you know, some of these brands, I still know them by head, you know, Omo, Sef, you know, all these brands uh, uh, that, uh, that, that are, are, are the shop. And then he would teach me how to uh, make sure that uh, I calculate the marker uh, quite well, and then we'll merchandise and we'll put the shop and making sure that we've merchandised it in a brilliant way. And in a way, and several things that he taught me. And through that process, I actually grew up behind the counter, if you like. So in that whole process, what did I learn? I learned the values of integrity. Integrity, integrity, integrity. I promise you, I promise you, there is no quick money in this world. Trust me, if somebody promises you quick money, there is a something that's going to happen that will be scandal. Most of some of the people that are now appearing on Zondo Commission is the people that I know personally, that I grew up with. And I promise you, if you miss integrity, you short circuit your whole life. So integrity taught me that because he was a man of integrity. Secondly, hard work. You see, if you leave your job now and you think, hey man, you know, I'm working too hard, like, Maybe family, and I'm working so hard, and I'm waking up, and I'm going to be an entrepreneur. Let me tell you, you're going to work three, four times harder than when you were in your job. Because in your job, at least you get there at 8 o'clock, and then at 4 o'clock, you knock out. Not when you're running your, your, your business. So you must be prepared to work hard. Work ethic is so fundamental. Number three, you must have a reason why you're starting the business. Let me tell you now, the biggest problem we're having as black people, and we must change this, we've got this puzzle mentality. Somebody started this puzzle, we all follow the world. Somebody started a taxi, I still meet old people now who are retiring, and they'll say, you know what? And Tata Yonke a pension fund, in Mali, I'm a pension fund, you're taking dates. I taught him, don't die like Mali, I can pension, I forget dates, because in 1980, taxi was making money, because we're getting into this mindset of having to copy. Uh, the, the key, key, key is what problem is your business solving? You must answer yourself that question. Because once you are solving a problem, money will come. People will buy that. The reason why, for instance, ShopRite is now able to make so much money uh, this is because they solve the problem of uh, any inefficiency. For you to go there and shop there, it says in 60, in 60 minutes, I'll deliver it to you. It saves me time. The reason why the technology has become billionaires is because as I was coming here, I was able to have three or four meetings, which have cost me to go and travel there. But I was able to get into Teams, into, into, into Zoom, and I was able to... But look at the LinkedIn guys. They're billionaires. So the third thing is what problem are you solving? Because if you're solving a problem, the business is going to come. But if you're just doing what somebody else is doing next door, you're not going to be able to. And there's lots of problems we have in, our, in, the, in this continent. They need business people, not government. Government is not going to be able to solve problems. It needs you as, as an entrepreneur to come in and say, I'm going to solve this problem. Uh, right now, our health system is failing. Our education system is failing. Look at who's making money out of our education system. How many of you tend to send your children to Kuro? Kuro saw an opportunity because our education system was uh, uh, happening. And who is that? And I know them. I'm not speaking in a negative way or in a racist way. But it's two white guys who saw an opportunity and says, there's a problem here. There's a gap here. There's a gap. Uh, our public education system is not producing the way we want to. And then there's parents who want to school. Our parents would spend any minute in order to take you to a good school. They took that gap, bang. Now, they're multimillionaires. What problem are you solving? Very important. And then finally, great, great, great. Resilience, resilience, resilience. Let me tell you, you will be knocked down. I promise you, uh, I have said it many times, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't even understand the word failure now because I don't include it in my vocabulary. So if you're fearful of failure, you're not going to succeed. Actually, I must give credit to acknowledge Martin Kaskas. He taught me this. What does 
fail means? It's got F A I L. Let me tell you what F is. First attempt in learn. Say it after me. First attempt in learn. So you can clap hands for that because that's very important. In business, you're gonna fail. And the high rate of failure is high. But what have you, the most important thing is not failure, it's lessons learned. I promise you, most of the businesses that I started, most of them failed. But when I had an opportunity to be part of the team that started Excel Petroleum, all the lessons of the business, starting from running, as I said, my little shop at the, at the foodies, lessons I've learned from my grandfather, and I've been in solar business. I, I, there's no MOA. Is, there's no business I have not tried and failed in them. But those lessons, cumulatively, I was able to make sure that we don't make those mistakes when we reach that stage when we're building Excel. So it's better to try and fail rather than fail to try. Let's repeat that. It's better to try and fail rather than fail to try, because you'll never know. You'll never know. So thank you very much. I wish you, let me just, let me just release now a blessing of entrepreneurship. I believe uh, some of you are going to be, not all of you, most of you sitting around here are going to be extremely successful business people. Do you believe that? And some of you are going to be millionaires. Do you believe that? And some of you are going to be billionaires. Do you believe that? And you, if you believe that, start with the first step. You have in you a God-given potential to be what you want to, God wants you to be. And I just want to release that blessing of the world. That's beautiful. Dr. Uh, Mpomi, I'm going to ask for the questions uh, from the floor. So if you want to ask a question, think about it. Don't tell us a long story. I say orange farm more, Just tell us what you want to ask. You are sitting here with knowledgeable people in front of you. Take advantage of that. Uh, as you think about your questions, that employ me your own uh, route where you've ended up now at the University of Technology in uh, TUT in Tswane and what you've uh, achieved with master's degrees and all of that. How has your root, your set of values shaped you to be who you are today? Um, one of the key values or a value that we, we have neglected uh, as uh, black South Africans is the role that a community can uh, play in shaping who we are. Yeah. A and, um, and unfortunately, in the epoch of capitalism, we have become very individualistic. And uh, we have also even neglected one another. And uh, sitting here in that day, I, I am the product of the community yeah. that never gave up on me. And uh, I do believe that uh, with uh, the young people that are sitting here, uh, in the next few years, there will be the reflection of the community they have grown up in. Now, from the community perspective, you need to ask your uh, your yourself a question. What role have I played to shape the life of each of these individuals? Yeah. Um, as the professor have said, some are going to be billionaires. Uh, will you be able to point and say, I invested in the life of that particular individual? Very good, very good. Thank you. The, um, can I ask, uh, who wants to ask a question? Where's the microphone? You know, when you are sitting in the front, you're always lucky to be pointed. I want someone from the back. Um, good day, everyone. I go by the name Temba. But most of you know me as Flaky Scott. So, sir, I wanted to know if um, 
I believe that most of us are entrepreneurs and we're always working hard. So I wanna know, Guti, how do you know if you have reached your maximum potential? Or how do you see, Guti, yeah, like now I've made it? Or am I far, am I close? Because sometimes it gets a bit tricky about, yeah, man. So that's what I wanted to know. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, uh, thank you, Mposula. Here's another hand, yes. I'm uh, going to go to the estate, I'm going to go to the estate. So, I'm going to the place. I don't know who to connect to. I don't know I never did anything related to into finance. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> last last question. Uh, a man with a red to uh, hat here, 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 right here, right here. Come to the front. Yeah, yeah. He's standing up. Yeah, him. He's going to ask a, a question, a short question. Um, thanks very much uh, for the opportunity. Um, my name is Bule. Uh, I'm from Trizik 4. Um, I heard the professor mention that it's very much important as much as you need to be educated, but being streetwise is one of the most key factors that you need to have in business. Yeah. But also he further like, stressed uh, on the issue of being educated. So I just wanted to check, um, Chair, to say, for a person that is streetwise and have started business through the street ideology and so on, is it fine since one assumes that I can't be able to afford to go to the formal process of varsity due to the issue of age and already having been too deep into the business, is it fine for one to continue doing short courses that actually Thank speaks you. to businesses and, and Thank so you. on? Very, very good question. The question in simple terms is, which is more important, skill or education, right? In a nutshell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you heard professors talking about continuous development and so on. Now let them answer this. And as they answer these questions, this is the closing statements they are making. Because we have to move now. The program has to... Uh, move to the next uh, session. Uh, Professor Khatebe, should I let Ntatem uh, show me to answer this one and then you will close? Okay, go ahead. Okay. Um, let me start with the first question. Uh, in uh, entrepreneurship, there is no ceiling. Yeah. Uh, most of the best entrepreneurs in the world start businesses that when they get bored with them, they sell them and start other businesses. So there's never been a time, there'll never be a time where you say you have reached the ceiling uh, unless you lack creativity. And, uh, and, and then, then the other aspect I think a link to that is that sometimes in South Africa, we start small businesses out of a great need and not necessarily out of passion. Uh, hence you will reach uh, the, the ceiling. So you need to actually ask yourself uh, within this space, are you in the space because you want to put bread on the table? Or are you in the space because you want to make a difference? Beautiful. Okay. Babu Khatev. And I agree with you, uh, my brother. Uh, you know, I love potential. That's why, you know, I, 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 I founded an organization called Unleashing Leadership Potential. Because the potential that you have, having done physics, there's a difference between uh, uh, latent potential and kinetic uh, potential. Our job here is to canonize your potential. Your potential is unlimited. You limit yourself with your own attitude or lack of uh, initiative or even lack of uh, uh, passion. So, uh, Temba, uh, you haven't even started uh, your potential. Looking at your age, uh, you haven't started. The business you have, you can grow it if it is relevant and it's meeting a certain need. You can grow it from here 
right through South Africa, right through Gauteng, and right through to the world. And if, if this business is relevant, you can, it's not relevant, you can change and start another business, and that will reach great hearts. I want you to think globally and act locally. So in other words, you act as you see things, but you think globally. You know, I went to uh, uh, Harvard University. Even somebody when he's starting a florist shop, they're already thinking about how to make it a global. You know how many of you, do you know who started KFC? We know the name of the guy. What's his name? Kendall Sanders. How old when he started KFC? He was 65. He started three of, of these shops. They started one, the second one, the third one, and then he realized this thing is, is works, and he rolled them out, and then from there he got, it reached a stage where, because he only was a, a good chef, but he reached a stage where he realized he needs to bring private equity, people who are smarter, who are financially astute, who've got management experience, and they work with him to actually roll it out throughout the world. So collaboration. You must always, when you're an entrepreneur, employ people who are twice, three times smarter than you in their field. Are you with me? Just put that there. I do that all the time. I'm leading academics who are three, four times smarter than me. But I know my job. My job is to lead and give them their space to actually do their job. So never be, uh, 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 have inferiority complex when you are an entrepreneur. Once you've got an inferiority complex and you want to control, you want to be the only one who make decisions, hey, this world is too complex. Get the first person you employ must be smarter than you. Let me just then uh, conclude. Uh, estate, property, please, go ahead. Uh, we need people who are going to own land. And uh, we need to own our land. And, and, and you need to acquire it, you need to till it, you need to develop properties on it. Finally, uh, streetwise versus potential. Short courses are important. In fact, these days you can get them online. You can even get them on your computer. Every time you've got to learn and learn and learn as an entrepreneur. So, all the best and I'm sure you're going to succeed. Ladies and gentlemen, please allow me to thank our esteemed panelists. Ntate Tsidi Somutlomi. Professor Morris Khatebe. Now, if you remember when I finished the panel on Wednesday, my last advice was focus on the chicken and not the eggs. So today, I'm stealing from Nelson Mandela. The glory of life lies not in never falling, but in rising each time you fall. Have a great weekend.